I was invited to join Operation Icebridge, which is the largest airborne survey of Earth's polar ice. They have outfitted it with a whole suite of instruments inside, so it's basically like a flying laboratory. They're uh, measuring the geography of the ice at both poles. They've been working on this mission for eight years and trying to figure out you know, how, what we can anticipate in terms of ice loss, ice melt, and as a result, what we can expect for sea level rise. Uh, I realized while I was there that I was actually the first artist to ever see Antarctica from that um, perspective, from that angle. When I returned from my first trip to Antarctica, I just felt so overwhelmed and I didn't, I, I was like, how can I translate this massive, like the scale of this landscape into pastel on paper? And I just thought I have to go as huge as I can possibly manage and um, in order to bring people that ex this experience that I'm getting to have and um, you know a privilege to, to see that as an artist and and figure out how to you know have the challenge of having to translate that um, those findings into my work. You can use so many different words to describe a glacier but if you look at an image of it it's just you immediately understand so much more. I'm there, I'm in these places, I snap these photos. It's a, it's a second, a moment in time that I capture. The iceberg that I'm drawing, by the time I'm finished drawing it, it doesn't look at all like it did when I took that photo and like I, you know, the drawing that I've made. Um, so that's just, it's something that's interesting to me. I sort of see, especially my iceberg pieces and even the glaciers too, they're, they're kind of like portraits. Like I, I mean, to me, they're kind of like love letters to these beautiful landscapes, but they are essentially portraits of these things that are constantly changing and that will no longer be there, you know, in a lot of cases by the time I'm finished with the actual drawing. So I hope that they'll um, live on in history and be kind of a record for future generations. I want to offer people a time and a place to connect with these places. And that's why I focus on the beauty of them as opposed to the devastation, because I want people to fall in love with them in the same way that I have, and I want to document them and their beauty. And, and I think the reason why I find that so important to focus on the positive, to show the beauty as opposed to the devastation, is because I think when we're bombarded with, with terrible news and with horrible imagery that's like scary and terrifying, it's it's exactly that, it's terrifying and it's paralyzing. And I think showing the, the beauty and thinking about the positive and thinking about the things that we have to celebrate still, um, that's empowering. And that's what allows people to move forward and actually take action. They feel empowered to do something. There's uh, quite often the moment where initially people think my work is a photograph and then, and then they realize it's, or you know, they learn that it's a drawing. And, and in that instance, what they do is zoom up <laughs> and they go really close and they want to look at it, you know, right in front of their nose. And um, what's interesting about that is that it draws them into the details immediately. I didn't have that intention in mind, but I think that's like a really lovely uh, result of my work that it like I'm trying to get people to get up close and personal with these places. And the reason why I draw them realistically or I, tr you know, I try my best to I want to portray that landscape that I experienced I, as, as much as I can, as many tiny details as I can possibly get into a composition, I want to get them in. <laughs> and, um, and the reason for that is I want to give people the experience of, of um, witnessing these landscapes because they're so far and extremely hard to get to and most of us can't travel to these places. So I want to offer um, people a place and time to have a moment with them. Experiencing the landscape is just as important as taking the photographs of it because when I come back I use both my memory of the experience and the photographs to create these large-scale compositions and one thing that that brings to mind for me is just the the element of time, the concept of time. It's, it kind of um, is something that weaves through all different parts of my work in, in many different ways. It's kind of a, a metaphor for the bigger picture of life in general, like nothing is, um, nothing stays the same, everything is constantly changing and shifting and it's interesting how like art really affects us emotionally, I think. We take action and make decisions based on our emotions 
more than anything else. And art has the ability to tap into those emotions. And that's what, um, that's what I try to do with my work.